Hey guys, what's up, what's up? Of course, welcome back, it's your girl cooking with Tammy. Today we're gonna to be making a delicious Southern classic. We're gonna take it all the way back to grandma's kitchen. We're gonna be making Southern style stew chicken, yay! So without further ado, let's introduce these ingredients and get to cooking. For this recipe, we're gonna need bell peppers. I'm gonna be using both red and green bell peppers. However, use whatever you have on hand, along with diced celery, diced onions, all purpose flour, butter, finely chopped garlic or if you don't have finely chopped garlic or should I say like whole garlic feel free to use garlic in the jar for our seasonings we're going to be using onion powder garlic powder Cajun or Creole seasoning and this is not traditional but we're going to incorporate it because it's going to amp and step the flavors on up we're going to be using roasted garlic and herb seasoning along with our chicken broth salt ground black pepper and oil with all of that being said let's get this pot rocking and let's get to cooking the first step to making delicious southern style stew chicken is to start with cleaning the chicken. So in this bowl I have some cold water. I added a good amount of salt along with lemon juice and I allowed the chicken to soak in this water solution for about let's say 5 to 10 minutes. Use your hands and rub it against the chicken to remove any slimy film that may be on the chicken. As you can see, check out all of the little fatty impurities that's sitting on the top. Once we're done with that, we're also going to get in there with the knife. I like to use a steak or paring knife, and we're going to remove some of that excess fat from this chicken. After we're done, we're going to rinse the chicken off once again in cold water, of course, until the water runs nice and clear. We're going to grab a couple paper towels, pat that chicken nice and dry, and that's basically it. Using a separate bowl or ramekin, we're going to take our onion powder, Cajun seasoning, roasted garlic and herb seasoning, and onion powder. We're also going to add some salt because, of course, your girl is rocking out with cooking with Tammy non-salted Cajun seasoning. If you don't have my seasonings, guys, you need to head on over to cookingwithtammy.shop. Grab it on up. Trust me, this seasoning right here is going to make a difference in your life. If you're going to be using, let's say, a Cajun seasoning that does contain salt, you could definitely skip adding the salt to the seasoning mix that we're creating. I'm going to add some ground black pepper. Once we're done, we're going to shuffle and mix our seasonings on up. Mix it on up really, really good until it's well combined. This seasoning mix might not seem like much. Trust me, it's going to make the ultimate difference. We're going to hit the chicken off with a small drizzle of oil. And that's just going to help to spread the seasoning a little bit easier onto the chicken. We're going to take all of our dry seasoning and add it to the chicken. Get in there really, really good. Mix this chicken on up with the seasoning. Make sure the seasoning is perfectly distributed throughout all of the chicken pieces. This part right here may take about, let's say, one to two minutes, but trust me, it's going to be worth it. Just make sure you mix it on up really, really good. Now, here's the thing. I know somebody's probably going to ask me, Tammy, are we going to put the chicken back into the refrigerator and allow it to sit overnight, or am I going to place it in the refrigerator to allow it to sit for a couple hours? To be honest with you, you don't have to do either or. Now, if you want to prep this the night before, you can definitely do that. It's not going to hurt the situation. Or you can simply do what I'm doing. If you're like pressed for time and you need to get this stew chicken like on the table right now, you can skip that part. You don't have to place the chicken into the refrigerator. In the meanwhile, our heavy duty or cast iron skillet should be getting nice and hot. Once the oil comes up to temperature, we're going to place our chicken pieces down into the pan. Of course, for this recipe, I am using boneless, skinless chicken. However, you could definitely use bone and chicken. I'm going to add about four pieces to the skillet. I'm not going to overcrowd the pan because I want that even heat distribution to take place. We're not going to be cooking it all the way through, but we are going to be browning the chicken. After about two to three minutes, you're going to take a quick peek. Once your chicken looks like this right here, nice and brown, we're going to flip it on over, allow it to brown on the other side as well. And the browning process on the other side should be about two to three minutes as well. Once we're done, we're going to remove our chicken, place it onto a plate. Of course, if you need to brown this chicken on up in a couple batches, definitely do so. Don't cram or force all of the chicken pieces into one pan. 
this pan right here, as you can see, is filled with a lot of smoky brown bits. This is just how we like it. We're also going to take our butter. We're going to add it to the skillet as well. We're going to incorporate the butter with the oil until it's nice and melted. Once we're done, we're going to add our onions along with our bell peppers, both red and green. If you don't have red or green bell peppers, rock out with whatever you have. If you have yellow and orange, pull those bell peppers out of the pantry or out of the refrigerator and rock out with those bell peppers as well. We're also going to add our diced celery and we're going to get to mixing. We're going to incorporate our veggies as the veggies start to saute and the natural juices are released. It's going to help to lift some of those brown bits from the bottom of the pan as well. We're going to saute our veggies for about two to three minutes. Last but not least, we're going to add our finely chopped or minced garlic to the mix. We're going to combine that as well. Of course, you can add the garlic right away simply because we don't want the garlic to burn. As the veggies started to saute, of course, those natural juices were released from the veggies, not to mention the celery. Celery does contain a lot of water. As you can see, a lot of the brown bits was lifted from the pan, which is great. We're going to go in with our flour. And we're just going to sprinkle a little bit at a time. Once we're done, we're going to incorporate those veggies with the flour. And the reason why we're adding the flour is because later we're going to be creating like a nice saucy sauce, or should I say gravy. That's going to be so delicious, of course. We're going to allow the flour to cook through for about, let's say, two minutes. Simply because we want to toast the flour on up. We don't want to be left with adding the flour and then adding the liquid right away. What's going to happen is... You're going to have like a floury type of sauce and that's not going to taste delicious. So it's best to toast that flour on up, cook the flour on down for a couple minutes. Once you're done, we're going to add our chicken broth and we're going to stir it on up. And make sure it's well incorporated. And in a matter of time, trust me, our sauce is going to start to thicken up. And that's definitely what we're looking for to happen. Once we're finished, we're going to place the chicken into the gravy. And at this point, we don't have to worry about overcrowding the pan. <laughs> Just make sure to submerge the chicken. And of course, we can't let all of this delicious juice go to waste. So of course, we're going to add it to our sauce as well. Once we're done, we're going to stir everything on up to assure that everything is well incorporated. Once again, we're going to cover it on down with the lid. When it comes to cooking the stewed chicken, I like to adjust my flame to low, medium. Allow it to take its time and stew for about maybe an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. Now here's the thing. If you're rocking out with boneless chicken, this process right here should take about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. However, if you are going to be cooking bone in chicken, it does take a little bit longer. So you may find yourself stewing your chicken for about maybe an hour and 30 minutes to an hour and 40 minutes. But nevertheless, you're going to check periodically, add a little bit of liquid if you need to add some liquid. If you feel that your sauce or your gravy is a little bit too thick, once you're done, you're going to finish the stew chicken off. By adding a little hot sauce if you're saucy, you're going to serve it on up with let's say maybe some white rice or even some mashed potatoes. Or you can definitely enjoy this delicious recipe by itself. I can tell you right now, this southern style stewed chicken was nothing to play with. It was absolutely delicious. I mean, so delicious that your girl made it three times in a row. Yes, I did. <laughs> As always, I'm your girl cooking with Tammy. And I will definitely catch you guys in another video. Talk to you later. Bye, guys.